controversies that have surrounded his bullet for bullet policy, Giulio Ribeiro still remains the super cop. In this edition of HD's weekly talk show, The Interview, we speak to him about politicians, bureaucrats, and the police. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ribeiro, and thank you for being with us. Let me begin with politics. Your latest salvo is against BJP's Devendra Fadnis and is barging into a police station to save a director of a pharmaceutical company. You have asked for his apology. Would you explain? No, I just uh, went back into my time when somebody did a thing like that. One of the MLAs who was a very, it was a bit of a nuisance, but also quite uh, uh, troublesome. You know, he uh, was very close to a former chief minister called Antule. And so he belonged to that type of uh, politics. And he barged into my one of my police stations and, and raised his voice and threatened my inspector. So when there was a complaint, I said, register an offense against him. And finally, when we did that, he went to the chief minister. Chief minister asked me to, to close the case. I said, only after he apologizes. And that is why I said he should apologize. Uh, not for any other reason. Yeah. You also said, and I quote, Fadnavis in the role of a CM in waiting is taking unnecessary risks due to impatience. Would you elaborate and tell me what you meant by this? You see, this uh, uh, Shiv Sena uh, divorced from the BJP because they wanted to become, they wanted to hold to sit on the gadi of the chief minister and then uh, then they tried to the bjp tried to bring that government down the first time they try they did it by trying to uh, team up with the ncp and uh, they had some sort of arrangement with them or understanding with them and they went and woke up the governor in the at the uh, the crack of dawn and made him swear in uh, um, uh, a government of the NCP with the uh, BJP with Mr. Padnavis as the, as the chief minister and Ajit Pawar as the deputy chief. That lasted just for a few hours because very soon uh, Sharad Pawar managed to get uh, Ajit Pawar back into his hold. And I really don't know because uh, Mr. Pawar is a very, Mr. Sharad Pawar is a very uh, clever politician. And but what he's was very the, fond of you. Oh, yeah, well, the, uh, we have we have always had good relations. That is all I can say. But uh, I also had great respect for him because he is a clever man, and uh, you know he knows every police, every chief police chief, and he knows the IAS officers. I think he knows how to use them. Suppose there are people who are corrupt, he uses them also. Though he knows very well that they are corrupt. He knows uh, the in. He knows exactly what each officer is worth and what he is used to and what are his failings, his weaknesses. He knows everything. He's, uh, he makes. He has got all that in his brain. Going back to Mr. Fadnavis, what, what did you mean when you said he's taking unnecessary risks due to impatience? You know, uh, I thought that they were trying to use first the uh, one case, the one of Sushant Singh Rajput. Then they tried with the other case, which was much stronger, the case against uh, uh, Sachin Vaze, who is just a junior official in the yes. police and who had been reinstated for the obvious purpose of collecting funds. And, and then after that, you had uh, uh, this episode where they wanted to show that the BJP uh, is the one that can manage to bring Remdesivir uh, to the market, whereas the, uh, the ruling dispensation cannot do that. So these are things that he, was, he has been always looking out for such occasions. And so he must play his cards properly. You were also very critical of the way the Sushant Singh Rajput case was handled. Would you yes. tell me what your reservations were? 
you see, the Sushant Singh Rajput's case was uh, a clear case of suicide. There was no doubt about that because the road was locked. They had to break it down. It took them about four and a half hours to break it down. You know, the lock. They only tried it through the lock. They didn't break down the the the, the door, and uh, that took them quite some time. And he was found there alone. I mean, there was no question of anybody else having done the 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 deed. So he was found hanging from the from the ceiling fan. So it was obviously a, a case of suicide. What do you think was the motive? Who were they trying to protect? Oh, the, we, no, no, it was uh, they were trying to make it into a murder, and and show that uh, this government was not capable of of protecting the man's life, and they probably wanted to show that there was a friendship between uh, Udav Thakre's son and uh, uh, this and, the, and Shushant Singh Rajput. They were wondering whether that would be a, a vehicle to uh, upset this government. But I think they should have given it up as soon as they realized that it that they won't have a leg to stand on. Wasn't it also about the nexus between Bollywood and politicians and also the drug mafia? I don't think there is such a big, uh, you know, uh, as I don't think so. I mean, maybe there is and they might find out the drug mafia. Uh, this was only retail drug trafficking. I don't think there was anything big, you know. There's the Bollywood people are not involved in the in the big drug uh, syndicates or anything like that. They were not into criminality. They were only using it probably, and uh, that is all they could get there because these were good uh, uh, customers, you know. Uh, that is these the people in Bollywood might be just customers. Being yes. an upright person that you are, don't you think that's bad enough? As the persons who who peddle drugs, those are the ones we should try and put away, because and but the persons who use drugs, there are lots of poor people also who use it, and they have to be treated. I have always been of that view. You spoke about Mr. Sharad Pawar, and you said I like him because he is a clever man. Do you like him because he is a clever man, or do you like him because he's a good man? Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Well, he has, he has always been good to me. And then when he offered you or suggested that you should head the probe on uh, Vaze and Anil Deshmukh and the scandal and the extortion racket, you refused. Well, I look, first of all, I'm not, I'm not in a position physically to make such investigation. And even if I was, was capable. I mean, it is not my job at this particular stage of my life to uh, make such, such inquiries. There are different ways by which they can make those inquiries. I wonder what was his intention. You said it was a murky affair and you would not touch it with a barge pole. Yes. Yes, I did. It was and now it has turned out even murkier. There's even been a murder involved in that. I think that many more things will come out, tumble out of that. And the main thing is, I think that uh, they should not try and and uh, and uh, save somebody. You know, this is what I feel they are going to do. Exactly. And Mr. Pavar's calculation perhaps was that if you were at the helm, then the inquiry would be completely impartial. And that is why he suggested your name. But how would, under what kind of powers do I have? A retired man was retired 30 years ago, 32 years ago. So what can, what kind of uh, uh, locus standi do you have? You have no locus standi at all. You can only but make... You know, that uh, was for the, you know, that was for the government to create. And since he's part of the government, I think the government would have taken care of that had you not refused outright. No, there was no question. I didn't take even a moment to decide that when they asked me, I said, no, I mean, they, nobody asked me officially. It's only the press, the media that got hold of me. Would it have been difficult for you to say no to Mr. Pavar had he called you and said, Mr. Rivero, I would like you to head this investigation? Might have been a little more, little slightly more difficult or the, or the way to say no 
would have been a little more difficult. But the no was definitely the answer. Your other reservation was that Anil Deshmukh was a sitting Home Minister. And that is yes. why, why should I head a probe? What did you have to lose, Mr. Ribeiro, irrespective of whether he was in office or out of office? Politicians, I mean, they should be uh, investigated by their own people or by the anti-corruption, not by, uh, you know, there are there are other, not by some retired officer. I think a retired judge is fine. I mean, Justice Sri Krishna, for instance, would have been able to make a good job of it. But uh, not, uh, not Jay Ribeiro. I sense, and if you will allow me to use the word, you're making an excuse or making excuses to wriggle out of a situation that you didn't want to get into, which, which is right. saying, I'm retired, I have no time, I don't want to do it. The, the word wriggle is, I don't think, correct. Right? You are, uh, it's not a very correct word to use. There's no question of wriggling. I just can't, I'm not going to do it. That is all, it's final. From the way I understand it, if Mr. Sharad Pawar were to call you now and ask you to head the probe, and considering Mr. Anil Deshmukh is no longer the Home Minister and he has resigned, would you reconsider your decision? No, no, not at all. I just can't. I mean, there's no question. This All the inquiries are being made. And as far as Anil Deshmukh, I think his, uh, his <laughs> goose has been cooked. Coming back to politics, two years ago, you had said Union Home Minister Amit Shah is a master at polarizing. Do you still hold that view? I, I have a lot of friends in the police, in the Gujarat police, and I keep in touch with them. And uh, uh, they, they generally mention that he is a very Machiavellian, uh, you know, operator. So what you said was based on hearsay or your first-hand experience? Perception is the only perception. I don't, how can I get the evidence to that effect? And what my friends tell me, they are keep, we keep in touch with people. You are also very critical of Prime Minister Modi. Well, when Mr. Modi does some good work, I have always acknowledged it. For example, his, uh, um, you know, the direct transfer of monies to the, to the recipient, I think it was an excellent thing. His Swachh Bharat, um, uh, pro, I think that was initiative was excellent. Though, of course, I admit that very often these new toilets are not used because there's no water. I pointed that out. So I'm, I think I'm quite fair. It's not that I am against Mr. Modi or Mr. Shah. What, in your view, are Prime Minister Modi's wrongs? <laughs> Well, I think that sometimes I don't believe him. That is the that is the main thing. Coming back to Parambir Singh's uh, issue, you said you are not convinced about Parambir Singh's role being above board. It is quite obvious. I mean, look, the, the Sachin Vaze could not have been brought back into the force except because of his machinations. There is no other explanation for that. His role in getting the Parambir Singh back into the force is uh, that, uh, and sorry, um, Sachin was a back into the force. That is a very, very vital question to ask and to resolve. You also wrote about Vazi and I quote, the very thought of pulling off such a bold crime is ridiculous. Was there a person so insane that he could think of such a strategy to meet an equally ridiculous demand of rupees 100 crore a month. There is obviously some other explanation for the stupidity. What, in your view, is that explanation? The first part of the statement which you have read out is, is I think, correct, which I made with regard to the find of the gelatin sticks in the car parked outside Amani's bungalow. Till today, I'm not able to figure out what was the motive of these people doing that because it has been now proved that it was the police who had put that car there and with the gelatin stick. Now, what was the motive? Some people say it is because of, uh, um, you know, uh, trying to extort money from money. But that would be a, a, a real puggles, if you ask me. I mean, 
you would be mad to think that they could do pull off a thing like that. You were Mumbai police commissioner and you said yes. such a thing could never have happened then. Are you saying extortions did not take place then? Uh, if they know that you are not going to tolerate any such thing, they won't do it. I know that. They won't do it. I know it. I've worked with them for 36 years. They follow your instruction. Even if you say, the, I know that the police force is very partial to the ships, you know, but if bring them here, all the leaders, 51 of them, you know, who are called Shaka Pramuks, bring them here, they bring them. I have done it myself. So are you claiming that during your tenure, these things did not happen? Because that but, is the time when the underworld was also coming up and Haji Mastan, etc. were, you know, surfacing. So, uh, would you say they had no truck with the police? They, they always have. I mean, there are this. This is happening everywhere in the world. I mean, there's no not only here. But you have to all. You have to keep it under check. I always say this is the three-legged stool: the police, the politician, and the criminal. And it you have the power to weaken one leg. You can't do anything about the politician leg because you are not in charge of them. They are probably in charge of you. But you can weaken the, this leg, and you, then so the the stool uh, totters. Certainly, uh, the criminal activity of this type was not at all evident in my time. When you were Mumbai Police Commissioner, you told your boys the job of the police is not to kill. An inspector then turned around and told you, and I quote. But you told us you don't want any gundas in our area. The only gunda must be the police inspector. Is this true, Mr. Ribeiro? You are right. I, not only that, I gave it in writing in the police notice. Because you see, the reason why I, I, I remember this, that I said it and I also wrote it, because there was a lot of complaints that the uh, Shiv Sena is being treated with uh, soft hands, you know being given too much latitude. So I even wrote, who is in charge of the streets? Is it the police or the Shiv Sena? And Bal Thakre phoned me, asking me, uh, who am I to, to make that statement? I said, I, this is I, the head of the force. I, I, I think it is my job to see that we are in charge because that's what the police are supposed to do. And I did say I didn't want any other gunda in any area. That is true. I agree. You have dealt with terrorists, you've dealt with hardened criminals. Do you think torture is the only way to get them around? No, in fact, you see, torture is a problem that happens in, in uh, countries like ours where the middle classes support it. If the middle classes didn't support torture, it would not happen. You, do, you, do you see this? Of course, sometimes they do try in UK and US and all that, but they are very careful. And they just, the, the public does not support it in those countries. Public will not support these encounter killings and all. That is why they don't take place there. It's here that it is, they take, they, they support it. And when did they start supporting it? They started supporting it when the judicial process system uh, got into the into a ruck. In, in now, it, that is the, the, the problem. The judicial process system has to be put back on rails. If it is not back on the rails, this will continue because the public doesn't know where it should go for, for justice. You are a celebrated police officer, yet the politicians are always gunning for you. One of the cabinet ministers in Punjab said, yeah, his attitude is, is the same as that of the police during the days of the British Raj. Why are you always in the eye of a storm? Look, uh, I I know my job as a police officer. I have to I have to uphold the law. I have to I have to uh, the law the law is there. I mean, the constitution is there, and you have to just uh, respect that. And if there are people who don't, I mean, uh, how can I uh, side with them? There's no question. So sometimes the politicians who don't want you to implement the law. I mean, they might say things like that. You know, there was also a communal twist, accidentally though, to your tenure in Punjab. And it was a Congress leader said, the Hindus love him 
and the Sikhs hate him. Were you divisive? That was very funny because in the beginning, I agree, there were a lot of misconception uh, as to why this man has come over here and uh, why has he been brought in order to kill Sikhs. I said, I've never killed anyone, so why, why should I kill Sikhs? They are my brothers. They are my. Uh, I've never, I've had so many Sikh friends before and after I went to the Punjab. After I went to the Punjab, I have more. In a fair assessment of yourself, were you feared or were you hated? At the end of every tenure of mine, uh, people uh, were on my side. That might tell you. And I, I can tell you that very confidently they were on my side because I was on theirs. You know, in Punjab, on the ground, this does not seem to be true. There were many who really hated you and wanted you out. And this is not only about politicians, it's also about the common people. I've gone there after, even after I retired, and I saw no such indication. I saw no, I don't think you are right. Your bullet for bullet policy in Punjab was criticized yeah. a great deal. Looking back, do you think you should have done it differently? See, this word, these words, bullet for bullet, was not my policy. And it was not, they were not my words. They were put into my mouth because this would involve revenge. And revenge is not part of my, of my, uh, my character at all. I mean, it's not, doesn't come into my head to take revenge. How can you disown the term? Because the title of your book is Bullet for Bullet. I'll tell you, when I wrote my book, they asked me, what is the title? What is the title? And they suggested, Penguin, that why don't we write Bullet for Bullet? They thought it would sell better. And at that time, I said, OK. So the fact that you gave consent for that title, Bullet for Bullet, you cannot disown it now. No, no, I, I did not. In fact, I did not even disown it at that time. I'll tell you why. Because, you know, who were the people who were being attacked by the terrorists? It was the ordinary Hindu. Any Anybody without, why Hindu, even a Sikh who didn't have an hair and, a, uh, you know, and his kada and did not have his, his turban. He was also a, a, a good candidate for going to the next world. So I, uh, I said that, look, they are so happy. They, they're, they, it, their morale rose with that bullet for bullet word. They really, there was, you could see that. And I said, why should I, you know, they are, they are really miserable. And to make them happy for at least some time, I think it was fine. I, I, I owned it at that time. I agree. There are two adjectives which are used for you. Super cop or super flop. How would you describe yourself? <laughs> you can take any. I don't mind even if you say super flop. In some ways, I am a super flop. And I don't like super cop also. Incidentally, I mean, I wouldn't like to be called a super flop because I don't think I am a super flop. But I wouldn't like to be called a super cop. You know why? Because there are so many people. Now, for example, Vazay, they would call him a super cop. Why he goes around shooting people and then you call him a super cop? So I not shot anyone. I don't think that the, anybody should be called a super cop. Now, all sorts of people are called super cops. So I would not like that to be... Uh, <laughs> to me to be called that. You have the image of being a tough cop, but very few know that you love music and you love races. So tell yes. me about both. <laughs> you see, uh, the the races is perhaps my my uh, love. The uh, music is my wife's. She she uh, you know so I be she doesn't like races, but she comes with me. I don't say that I don't like music. I've got used to it. You know, it's all classical, Western classical music, but we used to go together. And uh, I think it is very relaxing. And I got used to it. Now I know who's, what, whether it is uh, Mozart or uh, Beethoven that is being played and Chopin. That is, uh, I, I would even be able to recognize. because. But uh, racing, I, I know the, uh, it's, been, it's been a part of my this ever since I retired. Fortunately, my wife said it is after you retired, not during your, your tenure, because then you would waste a lot of time in that.
because I once on the racing days, the whole morning is spent in studying the, the form of the horses. It gives you a lot of relaxation also. You don't get, uh, you know, uh, dementia and things like that if you concentrate in this manner. So, but now the racing is all stopped. There's no racing now. Yeah. Mr. Ribeiro, thank you very much. Thank you for being with us and thank you for your time. Thank you.